All right, ladies and gentlemen, once again, we're still outside the booth inside Gloria, my man, Kansas City, Missouri, here with Mana, Mana Boy Martinez, nine and three. He's fighting Brandon Davis on October 15th. Mana, how the fuck are you? I'm good, man. Living good, life, bro. loving it. That's what I like to see. Now, uh, the first question I got is you've knocked out Casey Jones three times. Um, have you closed out that chapter? I was going through the topology and I was like, why are we booking this three times, first round knockouts? What he's, was that about? He's the only local dude that would step up, honestly, wow. man. And my, Respect to him, my, then, for stepping up. My hat's out. off yeah. definitely to him, man. He's, uh, he's been doing his thing out there, being in a couple of prospects out there. So definitely, uh, you know, have my he has my respect. And three times is a lot, but... He's hey, the only one if he's up. stepping up, he's stepping exactly. up. Now, one of those was in Bellator. I was curious, what was your experience in that promotion and that one-off fight? Um, I mean, there might be a reason why he didn't fight again. Uh, it was a, honestly, a shit show. Sure. <laughs> um, I was technically the main event of the night, literally the last fight. So uh, I got caught as a swing bout. I was an amateur at the sure. time. And, uh, seen Dada 5,000 and all them 3,000, whatever, all fight. <laughs> I'll walk out, Ken Shamrock, and then next thing you know, I'm the only one in, left to fight in the locker room. And, uh, yeah, that happened. They were kind of rushing us. I think the license for the event was going to expire. So yeah. they're like, oh, we got to walk out. Go finish they were this like, fight. They were like, go hey. finish this fight. And I was like, all right, well, I'm going to go clean They're house. like, hey, man, we need a first round this right. time. Yeah. <laughs> you got it. So, they're breaking down the octagon as you're getting into exactly, it. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Um, but, um, now, another opponent of yours, Ricky Tercios, his second loss came at your hands. How interesting was it to see him go on and win the Ultimate Fighter? It, it was good, man. It was definitely a stock builder for me. You know, I was yeah. rooting for him, and uh, I knew after beating him, he just wasn't going to be done. You know, he's still right. going to pursue that UFC chance. Got that dog in him. He does, yeah. man. He does. And uh, who's to say we cross paths again? You never know, but... That, we'll that'd see. be another fun fight. Um, now, what do you make of The Ultimate Fighter overall as a show? Because I'm hearing a lot of complaints and issues with the current product of it. Um, I wanted to know your opinion on it. Oh, that's, that's a good question. I think maybe where it's televised. I don't know. Sure. Things like Broadcast ESPN+. It. Plus. Yeah. yeah. Dude, if it were somehow on Spike still, I think <laughs> it might get... I don't even know if Spike's still around. <laughs> I don't know if it's around. You see, you see how I'm out of the loop with it, but... Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know if ESPN's got the right production for it or they're just not hyping it up right. But fair, yeah. back then, it just used to be popping, man. It was always available, it and was. now the marketing just isn't there. Okay, exactly. fair. Now, the last time you were in the Octagon, you were one half of Tapology's 31st best mixed martial arts fight of the year. Uh, your debut, break that one down for me. It was actually a year ago today. Yeah. Yeah, uh, it was against Guido Canetti. So I was originally supposed to fight... It was Jesse Strader, mm -hmm. and then I believe it was uh, Trevin Jones yes. that withdrew from it. So about a week out from that Trevin Jones getting ready, you know, to cut my weight that final week, found out I tested positive for like the second, third time with Jeez. COVID. And, uh, you know, that was obviously my UFC debut. I was excited, stoked, and kind of set me back. So once I was forced into quarantine, dude, I just ate up. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't have nothing else much to do then. Uh, my manager, Jason House, calls me. He's like, dude, a week and a half out, can you be ready? Um, you'll be cleared for COVID. Uh, we take this as your, as your debut fight, it being Guido. And uh, I did. I was obviously a little bit heavy on my weight, which caused me to miss weight. So I went out there. My coach was obviously uh, in the hospital. Uh, he later passed away. But, yeah, it was definitely an emotional win, man. And uh, yeah. I'm glad I was out there. Go, went out there to do it for him and get the win. Now, um, I wanted to, to talk to you about your coach, uh, Saul Saliz, I believe, if I'm pronouncing that right. Um, can you reflect on his impact on your mixed martial arts career? It was, uh, he had a big turnaround in my career. You know, After I suffered my first pro loss, he uh, came up to me in the locker room. I was sitting on the couch upset, and uh, he offered and opened his gym doors to me. And I had kind of known him for a while, my dad actually fought for his promotion in uh, really? Texas. And yeah, so it's kind of been a lifelong journey and I guess full circle. So when he offered his gym doors um, open to me, I accepted it. And uh, from there, he just took my game to another level, implemented a lot of hard work, dedication to my craft. And, uh, and there's just a numerous amount of words I can say for the guy, but it's just definitely like my second father, man, and I truly appreciate him. Yeah. 
Now, talking about Gil, uh, your mother said that she would divorce him if he fought again. <laughs> I was curious, can we sneak him into a smoker or something? Got to get Gil back inside the, uh, Dude, the ring. Gil, 2-0, oh, he'll, he'll <laughs> always have that over me. I retired professionally undefeated, this, that. I'm like, all right, Gil, all right, bro. Every Thanksgiving, he's I like, swear, yeah. <laughs> right. Get back in there, but... You never know, a smoke or something like that. <laughs> um, now, you are lifelong martial arts, of course. You started karate at four. Uh, what would you be doing if not for fighting? So there's two things. Um, well, quick backstory. When I was about 12 years old, um, I trained at a dojo karate school, Bushibon. And um, one of the ladies who, ran, who uh, worked at the front desk, who later went on to work for the UFC, her name's Myra, she, um, she ran into Dana downtown in Houston when... UFC was in town, and she asked him if he could stop by our karate school. Oh, sure. And, you know, she came back, Dana's going to come to our karate school, and nobody's obviously believing her, looking around. I honestly had my doubts, and yeah. uh, sure enough, you know, about an hour later, two black Escalades pull up, Holy Dana, his, 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 his big bodyguard pull up, and we're yeah. like, oh my God, Dana White's here. So I got to meet him then, and um, I told him, which wraps into the story, I told him, I said, when we took our picture, I whispered into the eye. I said, either I'm going to be fighting for you one day or I'm going to be playing for the Yankees. So I'm obviously not playing for the Yankees. And uh, <laughs> if I wasn't fighting, I think I maybe could have taken baseball a little bit more serious pursued and that, uh, sure. pursued that. But uh, Did you ever bring that conversation up to him again or that, that experience of meeting him at the karate studio? You um, say, I told you so. No, no. no. Uh, yeah. When when I had my Dana White looking for a fight and got to talk to him, I think we were just all talking about the contract. And, you know, he Fair. was like, very surprised, like, you know, not many guys get a quick turnaround like this because I think just a, about a half a year or maybe even less than that, I lost my Contender Series fight. So. Yeah. Uh, now, talking about that Contender Series fight, came up short. How challenging was that loss mentally for you? It was a little bit of a setback, sure. but I knew I was much better than that, man. I, I look back and watch that fight, and I'm like, dude, that's not me. I think it was a little bit of a shock going into an arena, walking out with no music. Nerves and shit. Yeah, it's Bro, a weird it experience. Was, it yeah. Was, yeah, I'm obviously used to it now, but I did not like it one bit, man. I was yeah. like, this is a fucking, I don't it's know. It's just you, weird. Yeah, yeah, it's a weird <laughs> atmosphere, man. But, um, yeah, I'm glad everything worked out how it was, and I, and I got to get my contract another way. Now, uh, to change gears a little bit, and you can confirm or deny this. You got the Yeezys, the Supreme, I see it. Is man a boy a hype beast? I gotta know. No. No, gotta, no, not a hype beast. I've been around, man. I've been around the game probably since about seventh, eighth grade in middle school. Now I see it, I'm like, dude, this guy's wearing Supreme, babe, this fight. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, they got something, but in my closet, I got a lot of OG stuff, and I'm Fair. like, bro, I, I'm not a hype beast. So I've been messing with this stuff. <laughs> now, almost a decade of fighting, and you're only 26. That's pretty crazy that you've been able to accumulate so much experience. When you reflect on those 10 years, what are some of the biggest takeaways or things that you've learned? Biggest takeaway is, you know, this MMA game lifestyle we live is a roller coaster ride, man. There's the highest sure. of the highs and the lowest of the lows, and uh, you got to appreciate each one of them. And... Um, I know my last fight didn't quite end up how I wanted to, especially in my hometown, and that's obviously one of my lowest of my lows, but I have a feeling with this next fight, it'll definitely be a breakout performance of mine, and it'll be one of the highest of my highs. So yeah. just embrace both of them and uh, feed off of them. Now, talking about that next one, break it down for me. Brandon Davis in October. What does he bring to the table, and how do you defeat him? He definitely brings some grit. You know, he's an OG. Uh, maybe not OG, but this is the second round of the UFC. He's fought guys like Gigan. Yeah. He's 14 and 9. He's got a lot of that pro yeah, experience. Yeah. Um, so maybe a dog fight, but um, with this recent change and uh, this full-time move over here to glory with amazing guys and training partners that I have now, I think uh, it's going to show, like I said, my breakout performance, and, uh, and I can't wait for everybody to see, man. I love it. Now, you're obviously wearing an El Jefe Jeff Molina shirt. Can you comment on the short-statured flyweight who recently was inducted to the number uh, 14 in, in the top 15 of 125? I mean, he's next, man. What can I say? What is he, 3-0, 4-0 in the UFC? So uh, him alongside David Onama, guys like that. And then you got younger guys like Micah, Mo. They're coming up through the um, regional yeah. scene. So every, everybody's up next, man. Our time is due soon, and we just got to continue to put in the hard work and dedication. Now, outside of the octagon and, and combat sports off the mats, when you moved here, no girlfriends, no real commitments personally. I was curious, man, boy, had that changed? Anybody in your life recently? Anything going on? Come on, man. <laughs> no. Um, I mean, 
they might know who they are if they see this. <laughs> but uh, for now, we'll keep the Facebook, we'll keep it Facebook the... status single. And, um, and um, nah, nah, no, no, no wife, no kids, no girl, no nothing like that. And uh, I think that's what's helping me keep my head straight. And uh, when the time's right, obviously I will. But uh, sure. Time's not right. We got fighting. Time's not right. And I got to yeah. talk to you off camera about some other stuff who sure. I've seen you with. So we'll uh, definitely facts, get that Facts, facts. We'll chat. Man up, man up, boy, Martinez. 18, uh, or 9 and 3, October 15th. That's when he's back in against let's, Brandon let's Davis. Let's get it right, too. Mana. <laughs> mana. Mana. Yeah, okay, mana. sure. So everybody's mana. Mana, mana, mana. What? Mana. what, you want what you the camera, the camera. Mana. <laughs> mana. Jeff, you've just been mispronouncing it a lot lately, man. We can't wait to see you back against Panther <laughs> Davis. Thank you, Mon. Appreciate, Appreciate it, brother. Man. Yes, sir.